This video isn't about woodworking. It's about where we used to live, right here. And I was gonna make a video showing off this house to a potential buyer, but then something else happened. It sold. It sold on the first day in about six hours with four competing offers, all above asking price. And the irony is we thought we were going in at a high price. So the real estate market is probably kind of crazy right now, but uh, we're okay because we already have our new place. So we're not exactly looking for a place. In fact, I would much prefer if the market cooled down a little bit because uh, high real estate prices just aren't good for uh, the country. This here is actually the best part of this house and it probably accounted for why it sold so quickly. We have a huge backyard. It's on a hundred foot wide lot and we'd hang out in the backyard quite often. It's very nice and cool underneath a tree and uh, sure the grass would get scuffed up over time but every time I mow I have to move these chairs anyways so it's not like we ever wore through the grass. Back here is a shed. I built that one in 2012 and I made a video series on that. And here's another shed. This one I built in 2008 using uh, mostly leftover materials. The siding is actually all leftover from when I built an addition on my previous house. Here's the garage, nothing special. And the house, which is actually kind of small. I think it's uh, 24 by 40 feet. Um, so that's uh, about a thousand square feet or a hundred square meters. Planted some trees, lots of raspberries here, red currants, more red currants, rhubarb. We used to have uh, garden beds right here. We put those in actually just two years ago, ironically, but we hadn't planned on moving at that point. And uh, I just uh, tore out the surroundings and seeded that and uh, that's starting to look like lawn. None of this may really matter very much because the person who bought it I think is a developer so uh, this is all gonna get churned up and big houses built in here, probably two of them. It's happening in this neighborhood because it's one of the few places where you can get large lots in the city still, just that there's houses in the way. In fact, this adjacent to ours, somebody already put in a big house and this was also a 100 foot lot and that house only covers half the lot. So I think he's just waiting for some zoning change or permission to sell off the other half of the lot. More trees. This is a plum tree. Most years the squirrel stole most of the plums. Ironically, with all the rain we've had this year, I think it's gonna have its best year yet, but uh, we won't get to harvest those because closing date is July 17th and these tend to ripen in August. Same with the apples. Uh, apple tree is doing quite well. Mind you, without spraying the right kind of chemicals, most of the apples end up wormy. These uh, modern varieties need more chemicals to do well than the older varieties. And this is an Italian plum tree. Never had a single plum off of it. I think it needs another related tree to pollinate off of. The fence, yeah, this is kind of dilapidated. I was gonna tear that out but Rachel said, no, I like that fence being there. It was freshly painted when I bought the place. Um, that paint is all kind of peeled in the last 10 years. Again, won't matter very much. This is the basement windows. This is one of three windows to the workshop. This is where the main area of the workshop was. Uh, the camera doesn't work through the dirty window. And this is the window right behind my main workbench. And I actually dug out these window wells the year I bought it and set them lower and also brought them out a bit so I'd get more light into the windows because I really like having natural light in the workshop. So let's go inside. So the remaining furniture in here is rather minimal because our agent advised us for staging it, uh, it's best to show off a small house with relatively little furniture so it doesn't become as apparent that the place is kind of small. So here's the living room. Here's the daybed. I built the daybed in uh, 1998 
and I added those drawers underneath, I think about two years ago, so 2015. A coffee table I built uh, back in, I think, 1991. This table was one of the first projects for my website, woodgears.ca, but it predated making videos of builds. Uh, I actually just used old firewood for this tabletop. And rather than trying to hide the fact that this is all short pieces, I thought I'd uh, put in pieces of mahogany in between to make this cool pattern. These are chairs that my dad made. I made one very similar to one of these, but uh, it's not here anymore. This is kind of a funny C-shaped wall. There used to be a wall separating the kitchen from the rest of the house, which uh, I think made sense originally. Um, but open concept is more popular nowadays, especially with people having no families or very small families, having everything in one space makes more sense. If you have a lot of kids, I think having separate spaces is more useful, but uh, having kids seems to uh, have gone out of fashion. This kitchen is made out of cherry. The only thing that's not solid cherry on the front here is these panels here. They're only cherry veneer. And the drawers, check this out, actual dovetail joints. And the drawer sides are made out of solid wood, not particle board, not plywood. And even all the plywood inside here, these shelves are plywood, but it's uh, Baltic birch plywood. So a very good quality kitchen. If only the kitchen in our new place was as good a quality. The previous owner had this place fixed up just to his liking as a bachelor, but then he got a family, so he sold it. He sold it to me about 10 years ago, and I was a bachelor when I bought it. And now with the family, it's too small. So once again, it's being sold. I just wish it was another bachelor that bought it instead of a developer. In the kitchen here is a corner shelf. I built that, I think about three years ago. There's also a video on that. What other projects have we got? Oh yeah, these boxes down here. That video was never very popular and they weren't as useful for organizing the space as I had hoped. Although for reorganizing it, it was very useful because you can just pull them like that and get at the back corners of what's in there. Let's see, what other projects have we got in here? There's a picture frame, which I made a video about making this one. And there's another picture frame. This one predated making videos about things. So I only have an article about making this one. And I also installed a light at the top of the ceiling because houses of this era tended to not have lights in the middle of the ceiling, which is really kind of stupid. The switch for that light is right there. And then back here we have Three small bedrooms. This is the master bedroom uh, with a queen size bed, which I wrote about on my website. Looks better with the curtains open. Would look even better if it was made, but I don't have the time for that right now. Um, no video of that because again, it predates making videos of stuff. I think that was about uh, 2008. This room is already completely cleared out, except for this picture, I guess. And this was the baby's room. Our agent recommended that we remove all the furniture, which we did, but uh, since then we've actually spent a couple of nights here, primarily because the AC at our new place broke and the AC here works and it was sweltering hot for a bit. So we actually moved this uh, temporary baby playpen back in here to use as a crib for Harriet. The bathroom here was done extremely well. This is all very nice tile. Um, here's the toilet roll holder that Rachel made and the plastic shelf, which a lot of, there's various people that were commenting, oh, this will no doubt break where the screws goes in. I actually pre-tapped those uh, screws with a temporary thread tap that I made, which I showed in a video recently how I did that. Um, so no problem with the shelf. It's very nice in that it keeps some of the clutter off of the uh, counter there. That was one of uh, Rachel's grapes.
Oh, another project in here. These curtain rods were actually the second article, woodworking article, that I produced after moving here. The first one was a pair of sawhorses, and I used those sawhorses as a platform for making those curtain rods, which are just a narrow piece of wood, and the rings actually slide fairly well on that. It was really meant more as a temporary solution, but uh, that was uh, nine and a half years ago now, and they're still there. And now they're being sold with the house because the curtain rods and curtains always belong to the house. Another project, these uh, moose antler things on the doors, which we actually used quite a lot just for hanging clothes to dry, just hanging coat hangers off of here or off the hooks on the end because, well, the house is kind of small and we don't like to use a dryer. So this was a good way to hang stuff kind of out of the way. Now let's go downstairs which is much less interesting than it used to be. This cabinet, I built that probably in 2011 because I remember making high definition video of it, but not a lot of it. And 2011 is when I got an HD camera. It's made out of a lot of uh, recycled uh, materials like these doors. And these used to be cabinet doors that I turned into drawers. Uh, it's one of the few piles of uh, our stuff that's still here. This is the uh, furnace room. The furnace our agent observed is 23 years old. He said that's due for replacement. But it worked just fine. Actually, I had to fix a couple of things with it. This is a set of shelves. I think I built those in 2008. Uh, the article for that did really well. No video of it because, again, I wasn't making videos of things back then, and YouTube was not as big as it is today. This used to be just full of stuff. This is where I stored all kinds of parts, all kinds of woods. It's almost like I used this as an extension of the workshop. That took a long time to clear out. Now going back here, we have the laundry room. Some shelves in here, which is the first time I think that I used uh, double mortise and tenon joints, and I wrote an article about that. Again, 2008, no video. Uh, no other projects that I wrote about in here. Oh, here is a project. This is a pirate sword. I made that for a Halloween costume. I think it was like 2008 or 2009. Again, no video of it. The cool thing is the way this blade is beveled is actually concave and these are actually cove cuts that I made on the table saw. It was uh, quite adventurous making a curved cove cut. And I think this sword looks so much cooler than any sort of plastic crap that you can buy at Walmart. The uh, guard on here is actually a bent lamination, three layers. Um, looks like it's one piece and then the pommel on the bottom is actually just a drawer knob I didn't feel like making anything on the lathe and I had this wooden knob and it was it looked just right Now finally Going into the workshop This is where I had the sign that said workshop Right here Which uh, I actually made as a prop for a video I shot in 2011 about my pen shaking contraption and in that video I had a scene where I slammed the door shut and the sign falls off and I pretended that that was an outtake but it was actually something that I did quite deliberately hanging this on the edge of the nail and uh, it took a few tries to hang it in such a way so that if I slammed the door shut that it would actually fall down whoops that wasn't planned and here's the workshop. All emptied out. This is where I had the air cleaners. This was my main work area. This is where the drill press was. This is where the tool wall was. A lot of the screws that I used to fasten things to the tool wall actually uh, went through the piece of plywood I put on here. So there's all kinds of little holes on there. But uh, in the exclusions, I did mention that the tool wall is coming out for the listing that is. So I hope they won't mind the holes. Again, I think the whole place is just gonna get smashed. 
Uh, the two windows from the inside, lots of light in here. I changed everything back to the original lights that were in here, which it used to be just in here, it was so bright, and now it's kind of, well, just a basement room. Lights make a huge difference. Oh, and the very last project I did in here, after I had moved out most of the equipment already, is I put in baseboards, because when I bought this place, this in here was carpeted. I tore out the carpet and it was a really ugly painted floor, so I painted that. But I never put in new baseboards because with all the stuff against the walls, you couldn't really see them. Except for right along here, because this wall, I kept this wall empty most of the time. Because if I needed to shoot against the white background, I'd always shoot against this and the lack of baseboards looked kind of bad. So I put baseboards in just to the part that was exposed. And then just recently, as in two weeks ago, I put in baseboards all around here just to make it a bit more presentable. I figured a new owner would probably want to tear this stuff all out anyways, but uh, just to look a little bit better. That effort is completely wasted because the new owner bought this place sight unseen. Time was of the essence. He knew he didn't have a lot of time because there was a lot of competing bids that day. Um, so there was actually several bids from developers, sight unseen. I imagine they probably drove past the place and decided that the lot was good enough. The floor, I painted it originally a lighter color and then I repainted parts of it. I thought the same color, but it was a bit darker. And you can see this was my main work area. And whenever I dropped a clamp or anything like that, it would take a chip out of the floor. Or if I spilled a little bit of glue, like right here, and if I tried to scrape that off, the paint always came with it. It's not very good concrete here, and it's actually only two inches thick. So I'm surprised I haven't actually uh, put a hole in this concrete floor yet. And part of what uh, prompted me to repaint some of the floor is there used to be a built-in closet right here. And in 2010, after I built my first homemade bandsaw, I just didn't have enough room in here anymore. So I took out that built-in closet and patched up the drywall to make it all look continuous. And I hadn't painted the inside of the built-in closet, so I had to paint that. So I had to get more paint mixed anyways. And that's where I repainted the areas that were in the worst shape. And I also, at that time, decided to paint the columns. Or, actually no, I painted this column because that one was in the wall. I think this one is the original color. And I think around that time I also decided to paint the I-beam just to have it a bit brighter in here. And paint the ducts. Oh, and here's another uh, project that I missed. The boot nook which uh, we used to have a lot of crap piled in there. Again, wasted effort now because it'll probably get smashed. And another project, some coat hooks I made. I think these are 2008 or 2009. No video of those. I used to have some more coat hooks right here and here, but we removed those before listing it because we wanted to keep those. And these here are the mid hooks that Rachel made. There is a video on that project. I think it's two or three years ago. It's before we had a baby, so uh, Rachel had more time at that time. So the uh, buyer of this place is actually gonna be visiting this place for the very first time at noon today. And I figured might as well meet him. My agent advised against that sort of thing. He says it usually results in hurt feelings. I think it's usually what happens is like, hey, my house is perfect. What do you mean you wanna rip this out and change that? But uh, no, actually this house is not perfect and I'm kind of expecting them to uh, tear it down. I think the best that can happen is that they hire some house movers and have this house moved somewhere else so it kind of gets an afterlife that is not here. Oh, and here's another cool thing. This Raspberry Pi camera thing which I used for my mousetrap videos. I put one of those up here December 2015 so that uh, we could keep an eye on what was going on here while visiting Rachel's parents a 10 hour drive away and after that well I just left it up there it was actually fastened up there very temporarily with a clamp and it stayed up there for almost a year and a half Rachel insists that we take that down when the house was for sale because it would be a little bit creepy for the showings 
But uh, now that we're no longer trying to sell it, I just put the camera back up because, well, impressions don't matter so much now, and it'll be interesting to see if there's anything going on here because I only come here every two or three days now to empty the dehumidifiers and haul out a few remaining bits. And a lot of people commented on Instagram when I posted photos of emptying out the shop. I'm gonna miss that shop and, well, it was a very cozy shop. It was actually originally intended as a stopgap measure because the reason I bought a house with a large lot is because I figured I'd build a workshop detached and so I needed a big enough lot for that and the logical space would have been right here. But then as a temporary measure I put it in the basement with its very low ceilings and well that was just very convenient because it was always cool in the summer it's always heated in the winter so I just lost all motivation to build an external shop and it's a good thing I didn't at this point because that would be wasted. So I met up with the buyer and he's had a partner and they are planning on redeveloping this place at some point but uh, not for a while so I guess the house gets a bit of a reprieve it'll be rented out for I don't know, a year, two, maybe three, 